Am I starting? All right. All right, welcome to session number two. So today we're going to be pretty much talking about nutrition. Um, let's, before I get started, just what do we kind of know like about nutrition? Do we track anything? Do we know what we eat before training, after training? So after training should be like a carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. And before. Cool. Yep, cool. Anyway. Well, today we're pretty much going to be talking about like nutrition, we're going to break it down a little bit more science behind it. We're going to be talking about uh, tracking your menstrual cycle, when you're on the pill, um, and also we're going to be going through some lifting at the end. So I'll pretty much talk through. A uh, little disclaimer, so I am not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian. Um, this is just solely on the studies I've done in the three past years, and I also do work with General Pop before I came here with the boys, so formidable. Um, so I do have a vast experience of understanding nutrition and also tracking understanding people's food. So any information disclosed through this seminar is purely for educational purpose only. It is not to diagnose, treat or cure. If you suspect any description um, of your health, it's advice to seek and advice from professional health care. So that's where you can see a dietitian, um, nutritionist or you can see a doctor. Um, so those girls that haven't seen me before, I'm Sabrina. Um, my background is I've done at least five years in the industry for S&C. Um, I've got my Bachelor of Exercise Sports Science. I've done multiple courses in my time um, to be an S&C coach. Um, I've done multiple internships. So I've been with Perth Glory. I've been with Subiaco Football Club. I'm currently with East Free with my other half, Lucia, over there. Um, we do, I've done State Academy for tennis and also worked with a few swimming clubs. So that's a bit of my background as well. So you do have a bit of an understanding that I do have a bit of a vast knowledge and understanding of different sports behind me. Um, I've also worked with a few world champions and also bridging the way down to amateurs level, which is pretty cool. So what are the biggest stigmas and also fads we've heard so far about nutrition? No carbs after nine o'clock. What else? What else we had? No carbs ever. <laughs> carbs are bad. Yeah. Keto. Yeah. Paleo. Paleo. Uh, juice cleanse. We've heard of those. Yes. Cool. So I'm going to break it all down to you of why that we shouldn't be doing those, and as an elite athlete, of what how you guys should be fueling your bodies. Cool. So these are some questions I want you kind of thinking pretty much the whole time I'm kind of having a chat today. So, is your menstrual cycle regular? Do you guys track them? You don't have to answer them. You can either nod or yes or no, or just like internally as well. Um, do you feel fatigue all the time? Is it hard to bounce back um, before and after sessions as well? Like if you're going to a Tuesday session and you're going to the gym on a Wednesday, for example, are you constantly sore all the time? Um, do you feel like you're eating a substantial amount of food every day? Do you feel personally yourself you're eating enough? Or is it like you know you're under eating but you're not doing anything about it? Let that sink in. Go. Oh, my bad. Yes, <laughs> come on. <laughs> just, just in your own little I was world. About all the questions. About the mental one. <laughs> That's the most important. Cool. So what we're going to be covering today is breaking down nutrition. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of science talk about this. Um, what is red S? Have you guys heard of red S? Love that. Um, female tried, so menstrual cycle, understand the importance of this and how you can track it and also when you are training as well, how it also affects you girls. Um, fueling for athlete performance and recovery and some examples of some food choices. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> so as athletes, you need to eat to train. They don't, ex they don't diet and exercise. So there's a difference between you guys and also general pop. You guys need to fuel your bodies to actually perform better as an everyday human being or someone who just wants to look good, they diet and exercise. That is the difference between you guys and everyone else. So let's talk a little bit science, let's break it down. Let's go into the fun stuff. So what we got is TDE. Can you guys kind of see like that screen there? So pretty much is these is what we're talking about. There's a thermal delivery, oh it's not there. I can't remember what it is. Anyway, um, so pretty much this is the breakdown of pretty much how you need to actually survive for your body. If you're not eating any food, your body is not going to survive and is not going to be at its optimal level. So pretty much what we do is a BRR. So it's your basal metabolic rate. So this is how much calories and energy is burned at rest to stay alive. So this is also to do with your height, your weight, your sex, 
Um, and also this is when you're sleeping and also not moving. So when you're literally sleeping at night, your body still needs food to actually like your organs. You need to be sleeping. You make sure you need to be breathing. So all these small little things are super vital for you to actually live. We've got NEAT, which is a non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this is energies and calories burnt during activity. So you guys do the training session, you just burn a hefty amount of calories, but you do not need to be tracking how much calories you're burning to be eating as well. Um, and also this is a hence why a step count can also be important. So for example, if I've got an average Karen who's just sitting every day on a desk nine to five, compared to someone who's a school teacher constantly running up and down, who do you reckon needs to eat more and who needs to eat less? Teacher, yes, cool. So all these little factors do come in as well as like what you do for a day, how many times a week you train, and what you do for a worker. So do it come into account of what your eating needs to be having. Um, we also got a thermal effect food. So these are certain food choices that also make your stomach and lining. Make sure that you are burning a little bit more food. So there are some food samples like that that I'll touch on later on that can also affect you. Um, and also exercise activity related. So, so you guys are training at least two or three times a week. You've got a gym session, you've got some running programs coming up. So all these need to be factored in when you're consuming food and also when you're thinking about planning for the next day. So these are pretty much food. Um, this is what you need to do in order to survive. So your basal metabolic rate, which is your BMR I just talked about, and your TDE is your energy intake. So this is what we're going to be breaking it down. You guys can bring your phones down and kind of have a little bit of a mind breezer of what you guys should be having. So with your body weight, I want you to have your phones, type your body weight in and times it by 22. That is what your basal metabolic rate should be in calories. So I've done mine, for example, back when I was light at 60 kilos. I am not that anymore. Um, so 60 times 22, that is pretty much my average calories of 1,320. So that is what I should be having just to actually make my body actually survive optimally. Once you've done that, you do your training calories. So averagely, if you are training at least two times, no, three times, about six times a week, you should be sitting about 1.4, or you can go 1.6 if you are doing more than that. So that is that range we do want to be sitting in for the BMR. So this is when you're doing that. So when you work out your BMR, I want you to 10 times it by 1.4. Cool. And then with my working out, um, with my six kilos, I'm 22. Um, I end up getting up 1,840 calories. So that is minimum what I should be having when I'm training and also just for my body to survive optimally. But currently I've worked out with my coach and everything that I'm currently sitting at 2,300. So that takes time and education over time. But this is where you should be roughly seeing yourself eating. So I don't want you to track your food, I just want you to have a good understanding um, of what you should be having as a minimum to actually survive and to actually feel optimal and feel good the next time. Are we shocked at the numbers? Yes. What do we got? 2,300. 2,300. Yep. 2,300. Cool. Yeah. That's a rough. Cool. So we're all a little bit shocked of how much we should be having, even though we're not really tracking. Cool. So we'll break it down a little bit later on. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard time, yeah. But if you pick like maybe one day and just pick a day and like track all your foods and it kind of can also surprise you how much you're overeating or how much you're undereating because there are such as food labels that are tend to be like low calories but they're sometimes high fat. So those are all come into factors. All right. Good. Mind blown one. So let's go next one. So let's train like an athlete, eat like nutritionist, and win like a champion. That is the mindset you need to be always constantly having. I like to throw in little quotes in there. So let's break it down. So we got carbs, we got fats, we got proteins, and we got fluids that we always constantly need to be having. So with carbs, these are kind of a breakdown you need to be having um, per day, pretty much. So recommended range is six to ten kilos grams per kilos of body weight. So Body weight, for example, 60 kilos times six is how much carbs you should be technically having. Um, depending on your physical level, training load, expenditure, and type of physical activity is what we do recommend as a minimal. So you guys want to crunch that number as well. So go body weight times about eight kilos, eight grams, sorry. So body weight times eight. And that's how much carbs you guys should be kind of consuming. So 
Carbs are super important, so you guys need to be having that before or after training. This is a fuel source, like you've got to think of a car. Petrol, a car, you need petrol. Same thing like the human body. So that's what the most baseline that we do need. Next up, we got fats. So fats are super important. They are essential fatty acids that are in fish. We got them in salmon, tuna, mackerel, some seeds like flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, walnuts, oils, um, such as flaxseed oil, soy oil, olive oil, avocados are good as well. So these are super good for lubricants. They're gonna help your gut lining. The rest are gonna make sure um, that you are well recovered as well. Um, recommend down as of fats for athletes is approximately 25 to about 30% of their body um, calorie index. So fats are really good, they're important for the organs, tissue and also decreasing inflammation. So if you are not consuming any fats or even a high keto diet, you're going to be quite hard to break it all down as well for energy use. And also with this, um, with inflammation, so you guys are quite high contact sports, so you do need this so as to help reduce inflammation and also recovery. Oh, you've gone already. Um, all right, so now protein. I was like, what, I was like waiting for it. <laughs> um, so protein intake. So this is also another important vital one that I want you guys to break it down. So with your body weight again, let's go one um, body weight times 1.8. That is how much grams of protein you should be consuming a day. About 10 to 35 percent of protein should be in athletes overall. So your intake, if you have inadequate intake of protein, what can generally happen is you get moodiness, susceptible colds, infections, you have high risk of injury, which is also another big thing. Um, you'll notice your hair's weak, your nails are a little bit weaker, and also your skin, you won't be noticing, it won't be as, as consistent. Um, and also you will struggle with fat loss later on down the track. So carbs and protein are the two most vital things as an athlete I want you to kind of be more aware of when you're consuming these. Um, another important thing is hydration and fluids. So you can't pretty much be playing a game without being um, hydrated at the same time. So if you are dehydrated, again, it's gonna decrease performance. Um, it's gonna give you a decreased performance and perception as well of effort on the fields. Fluids intake during exercise can address the sweat off occur to assist in the thermoregulation. So pretty much is you always, when you're before going on a field, ideally, I like to weigh you then you're coming off, we want to be roughly about the same. So I used to do this back before when I was working with the men's in the footy club. We used to track their weight before they go on a field on game day. When they came off as well, that difference is how much they have to consume before they left. If they lost two kilos, they're consuming two liters of water. I don't care how they get it done, but they're getting it down. It just means that's how much fluid you lost on field. So it's super important to be hydrated. You get hydrolyte, you have Powerade, salts, tablets, they're what's gonna hold that fluid in you so you're not gonna be feeling dehydrated because at the end of the quarter, you could be different down by one point and you feel like shit. That you can't pretty much be feeling that. You wanna be always having a nice, getting on top of it. So then you're not letting the team down, not letting yourself down and also having like another two or extra days recovery behind. Cool? All right. How does nutrition assess with being injury free? So if you guys are under eating or consuming at low energy availability, which is what we're gonna go into red S, um, this can result in unwanted loss of muscle, menstrual dysfunction, hormone distribution, suboptimal of bone density as well. Um, it can increase risk of fatigue, injury, illness, and also lastly, adaptation and recovery process. So if you're not eating enough, what we're going to go into is red S. So we've got anorrhea as well. So this is when your body is not consuming enough and you're always in that low state. Um, and also this is also going to affect performance and also give you a little bit more increased risk of injury. So this is what we also want to avoid. So making sure you are understanding the nutrition is super important, just as well as training and also coming attending sessions. So 87% of athletes don't know what related a red S symptoms is. So that is a pretty much a big chance of athletes. Is that what it says? Yeah, 87% of athletes demonstrate yeah. at least one health-related symptom described by the red S model. Cool. So no one here has heard of red S, have they? Cool. So red S, it is relative energy deficient syndrome. Which I'm gonna go into. Bang. Yep. 
So pretty much is when you're constantly undereating for a very long period of time, think about it like a battery. You're going to be sitting at a very low state for the whole entire time. You're not going to be having enough energy. You're going to be feeling like you're super drained. What's going to happen is if you're still constantly undereating or you have a little bit more fruit each day, well, you're going to slowly pick up, pick up. Um, when you get to a certain point over here, your menstrual cycle is going to be massively diminished. And also that's another indicator of where as females, we can kind of regulate ourselves and understand where we're kind of sitting. Um, towards the end, once you start eating more and more food, body is going to adapt and you're going to feel pretty optimal. So this is kind of another way to kind of give you guys more a visual of what's happened if thinking about a really dead battery and you want to be comparing it to a full battery. So these are what we want to be thinking of. So with Red S, the risk associated in performance is you get decreased injuries, you get decreased responses, impaired judgment, coordination, decreased concentration, infertility, depression, um, glycogen stores, which is from carbohydrates when you're eating it for a very long period of time, and also decreased training responses. So again, these are all symptoms when you're constantly under eating for a long period of time. What can happen and affect this is you've got high stress, um, high workload or training loads, um, not eating and sleeping properly, and also like high symptoms of PMS, which is like moodiness, lack of sleep, headaches, diarrhea, um, and also like headaches constantly. So these are what we also get from PMS when we have them time of the month. I'll explain a little bit later on about this menstrual cycle of how that actually works. But that being a female is super important. We get a vital tool of having our cycle every month. And that is pretty much a checkpoint to see, are we on track with everything? If we're on the pill, that is a little bit different. But this is a, have you, if you're not on the pill, it's a very common tool and very handy to understand where you're actually sitting and how your body is actually affecting with your training. Risk and associated. So with this, as I mentioned, the female triad is the super important thing that is generally happens to a lot of young females. So a lot of young girls with social media nowadays with certain sports like dancing, cheerleading, um, or female sports, we all are chasing a certain physique to be skinny, to be lean, to look good on courts. Compared to like Tina Trudy, have you guys seen her from CrossFit? Have you guys seen her? Yes. She's like bulky, she's strong as fuck. She has technically a man's body, but she performs extremely well. So a lot of people probably discriminate that and that will get to a lot of females' mental health. So it's understanding of like performance and also physique and like tying them together um, and also ensuring that you are eating enough that way. So if you're under eating for a long period of time for your sport, all of this is gonna affect you in the long period of time. So yes, it may feel good that you're performing, you're looking good at this point in time, but later on, if you add 10 years later on, your gut, your hormones are gonna be out of whack. Skin could be a factor. Um, mood and everything like that, you're gonna have to take supplements to try to bring all these levels back up. So what generally happens is menstrual cycle goes first. If you're in an under eating for a long period of time, you're gonna be skipping cycles, it's gonna be heavy, it's gonna be painful. Um, if you're on the pill, it's technically a fake bleeding you're getting every month. With bone health, you're gonna be susceptible to sprains, shin splints, all these stuff. Um, you get endocrine, which is a metabolic, which is also like your hormones. Um, growth, so you can notice if, if you're starting from a long period of time and having limited food, it's gonna stunt your growth development. So, yes, I'm sure, that doesn't mean I haven't been eating. Um, just to throw that in there. <laughs> this is just my, just my genetics. Um, mentally, you're gonna be affected, you're gonna be drained all the time, you're gonna be uh, depressed. There's uh, studies as well out there that if you've been under eating for a long period of time, it's called anorea for females, you are susceptible to more depression um, than compared to anyone else. Um, cardiovascular, so the way you pump your blood around, your heart, you won't be as optimal getting VO2 levels compared to someone else who's been eating for a longer period of time. And also gastro and immunity, so pretty much gastro is pretty much your gut and pretty much how it's functioning on the inside. And also, if you, are you constantly getting sick all the time? So going through tracking your menstrual cycle now, does any of you girls use an app or how do we use to track it? Yeah. App, flow, yeah. that is the best one to pretty much use. Next. So this is pretty much our menstrual cycle here. So this is what we call the follicular phase. This is day one. So on this is day one to seven, which is pretty much that part here at the front. 
um, on that first one to seven days when we get our period pretty much. So what's happened during that time, it's a steady rise, it's just, you can see that pretty much blue line there, that's what we call estrogen. That is a, what's gonna peak until we get onto ovulation stage, which is in that middle of the month or whenever pretty much everyone has it, but it's checking around that two week mark. What we got here is that yellow line. So that's this one over here. So that yellow line stimulates the follicle stimulating hormone, which is called FSH. And this is what stems the estrogen causing rise in the estrogen phase. So understanding this is gonna break it down of how we can help with your training as well. Um, and this orange line is what we call the hormone releasing and cause ovulation during the release egg and the follicles in their ovaries. So pretty much if you're not um, in that normal stage and you're under eating for a long period of time, what can happen is you miss your periods more than seven days, it can be very heavy. Um, you get irregular cycles and PMS as mentioned before where you get like diarrhea, um, migraines, headaches, stomach aches, um, you get acne as well. Um, so understanding that all those issues are because you're not eating properly as well. Um, with the follicular phase, um, it's ideally for the days that we are looking at for ideally in the peak area. Um, your period duration should be at least four to seven days. If it's over, again, that's a red flag. Just have a look at that. Could be stress, it could be anything else. That's why flow is really handy. You guys can track and put data in there and it can relay back to you. And ideally your day length should be 28 to 32 days. If anything is over or under, again, this is the indicator for us that we need to recheck and see how our week's going or what is actually happening to our bodies. If you go next. So as you looked at that first phase of how the estrogen was rising in that week too, this is when you're on the oral conceptive pill. You can see it's pretty much a dead straight line, that orange and that blue. So what is actually happening to your bodies? I'm not telling you need to get off the pill. This is just what studies and stuff has done. If you go on the pill, that's completely your choice. Everyone's got their own reasoning. I am just clearly just stating just because of studies, just to clear the waters of that. So when you're on the pill, what generally happens is you've got your estrogen and you've got your FSH hormones here. Nothing is pretty much happening at the moment. It's just pretty much staying as constant as it can. And all the withdrawal bleeding is pretty much just when you're taking the sugar pills, it's just pretty much telling the body, we need to stop what we're doing at the moment. We need to get this out, reflush the system and kind of go back into it again. So this is the only reason what's different. So you can't really track and understand your body when you're on the pill because this is kind of like a little barrier. So when you're on the pill, you are more susceptible to magnesium. I know so we do recommend taking some B6 vitamins. Again, B6 is mainly found in meats, um, poetry, and I'll explain the thing, it's in the next slide. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so when you're on the pill, pretty much magnesium and B6 are shown to reduce some PMS symptoms up to 70%. So this is why understanding what food sources to be consuming all the time is super handy. So again, making sure you're having whole grains, seeds in your diet, meat and poultry are contain a lot of B6. So when it's around that time of the month, around that week one to 14, it's super important to have these kind of fuel sources in your body. So you know you're kind of adequately having enough vitamins and minerals, so you're not really having any PMS symptoms. And this is gonna delay any soreness or any stomach aches that you sometimes do generally get. When you're going through that second phase, so what we call this is the luteal phase. So this is day 14, so it's about 32, 28, depending on every individual. So starting at the ovulation, it's gonna restart pretty much your period, so it's kicking it off again. So that purple line pretty much here, um, it is the ovulation occurred to when the progesterone um, and as a smoothing, calming hormone is kind of kicking off, getting ready to start that whole cycle and process again. During ovulation, the egg releases during follicular and allow fertilization. However, it's only got 24 hours to be fertilized. So this is kind of just some inside facts of like, every girl always is like, I'm worried I'm gonna get pregnant, I'm gonna get this. You've only got 24 hours technically, if you actually know when your actual cycle is. And also when you're in that stage, um, your body is more in a joint laxity. So this is when your body is more stressed and strained um, and you are a little more susceptible to some injuries just because it's got more calcium release as your body is also trying to prepare for that next cycle to come through. So understanding what phase you're in if you're not on the pill is super important because this relays back to your training. If you're feeling up sore and you know you're in your week three and your period is coming through next month, that is okay to pull the pin back a little bit. This is what's happening as females. We don't have enough studies out there at the moment, but I tracked all my girls. We did all of our girls' data for the last three years. I was my footy club, and every single time they were on the week of their period, we had two ACLs. So that was kind of a bit of an eye-opener that happened. I'm not gonna say it's gonna happen to you girls, 
but they just weren't aware of what was happening. They just kind of pushed through and then that unfortunately just has happened to them during that time. So again, when you're at that time of the period and you are not feeling okay, that is absolutely fine. You are not meant to be feeling at your peak, but you still can push through, but you just got to understand where your body is sitting at that time and also learn to adapt that it's okay. And then you can push through from the next session. So understanding the cycles can prevent injury. So pretty much long story short, go back. Um, so you are 88% greater in the late follicle cycle compared to the follicle cycle. Um, to get more muscle tendons, tears, strains occur twice, often during the late follicle phase compared to other phase. So just as mentioned beforehand, it's super important to understand what phase you're in as you are a little bit more susceptible to injuries in that time. There isn't enough studies behind there, but they're just from the data I've collected and understanding how to work with female athletes. These are what's gonna happen. So again, making sure you're taking yourself your sleep, your nutrition, um, and also getting your adequate training in and also letting us know if you're super sore or pulling up anything where your coach can also change anything for you. That's super important to understand during this phase. Um, injury risk, you may be elevated to typical um, if from Norwich during after the next menstrual cycle is expected to start. So pretty much as I was mentioned again, around that week three to four, just before that cycle's about to kick off, you are a little bit more susceptible to injury as that body's just preparing for that menstrual cycle to kick off again. Um, and as mentioned before, due to joint laxity increases, um, there's been studies that the knee laxative has observed during the ovulation compared to the luteal phase. Um, but there is no significant changes in the knee mechanics corresponding the menstrual cycle. So pretty much this was a study done in 2021. Um, it was a bunch of uh, netballers that they did the studies on over a four year period. What has happened is they pretty much tracked the whole studies and how the girls cycles were tracking. Over that time, they just noticed their knee laxity, so that when we're jumping, they were knee was coming in. When we're teaching you guys that, it's just super important that we're not um, building up that foundation of incorrect form. So again, they've had a good knowledge of um, gym behind them. So with this one, they were just pretty much understanding that the knee is more laxative, so there's more give. So if you think of a rubber band and it's stretching out, it's more laxative that way. Um, so they were a little bit more susceptible to having injuries during that time. So going through some examples of the snack pre and post, what do we generally have? Let's throw some stuff out. What do we have pre-game? Banana, Banana fruit. Is that what we enjoy doing? <laughs> Not a fan. Nothing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> do you feel sick? Like. What do we have after training? <laughs> Look, mood, mood, mood. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So at least we're eating something. At least find something to eat. Like up and goes are good. Protein bars. Yes, but you have carbs in them, so technically you're not wrong. Um, but it's going to dehydrate you end of the day again. Um, again, pre-training, I'm going to go through again, making sure your feelings having a little bit of protein, have a little bit of carbs, a little bit of fats. But again, making sure your timing is right before having it before the game or training session. So if you want to pop through. So I love Jess Spend Love. She's a dietitian on Instagram. She posts pretty much all these really good ideas and photos. I would highly recommend you kind of give her a follow to give you guys a little more information. So she pretty much breaks down of what you guys kind of see, like how do you feel around your training? So you got your meals, your priming meals, which is pretty much like a Yopro, a banana. You go do your training um, and then you kind of can have a normal meal, which is like a wrap. And then you got snacks, which are just fruits. So these are kind of different timings of like how you guys can kind of base your food around your training. Um, and then again, fueling it on game day. So depending what day and time you kind of start, just understanding to have some light snacks, Grab a smoothie if you're on the go and you want to grab something in. A banana is good. Then a yo um, water and some salads. And then in the evening, just having a big meal. So understanding like when to have them have a little play around. That's what training session is for. To kind of like have a little prep time, understand what time, what works best with your bodies. Then actually trialing things on game day. Game day is when you should be at your optimal and you want to be ready. Um, you shouldn't be trialing anything new on that day. 
Um, and then here we've got a little bit more snacks ideas. So we've got YoPro, um, we've got apple, hummus and carrots, um, bars with strawberries, um, popcorn, so cons, popcorns are really good, they're low calorie, um, but you can much have heaps of them and you feel pretty much full. And the salsa caramel one's really good. Uh, what else? And then picking your player. So picking out pretty much your carbohydrates, you got your protein, you got colours in there, and you also just want to be having fat. So pretty much when you're making a meal, you want to be as colourful as possible so you know you're hitting all the meters. So you're making sure you've got your whites, which is like protein, which is either chicken, um, you've got your reds in there, purples, um, oranges, yellows in the colours for the vegetables, and then you've got your fat. So making sure every time you're having dinner or having some lunches, it's as colourful as possible so you know you're pretty much getting all the minerals and proteins and carbs that you are required. So, take home message, so fueling for performance. So one, come back to earth. So you always wanna be having like minimal processed food. So always keep it as clean as possible. Two, eat the colors of the rainbow. So as varied as possible, as I just said. Um, so the less, less legs, the better. So choose lean options. Um, it's gonna be a lot more bang for your buck for more protein options. Um, eat fats and give them back. So making sure you're having olive oil, there's avocado, you've got nuts in there in quantities as well. So nuts are super high in fat. So again, if you're having like a whole bowl, that is a lot of content if you look behind compared to like having a handful. I always recommend always going by palm. So what I generally learned is pretty much protein is a fist, carbs is a hand, fats is a thumb. So when you guys are looking around, that's a simple tool that I kind of utilize when you're going out. So you always know that each meal kind of like fits around and you're tracking yourself. Um, making sure you have breakfast every day. Um, so either something you're having, um, I don't, just making sure you always have breakfast so you're fueling for the body in the morning. Um, what I used to tell a lot of my clients beforehand, so hot water, lemon, lime, and glutamine is what's gonna kinda set the gut to function properly and it's gonna kinda kickstart your day. And it's also gonna just reset the body and let set the gut lining that it's ready for food for that day. Um, but otherwise you can just either grab like a hot water, milk or something, just kind of consume some liquor beforehand. Um, making sure six for three, so you got your um, nutrition every three hours. So ideally breakfast, lunch, dinners and a few snacks. Um, staying hydrated as possible. Don't waste your workout. So always fuel post training with carbs and protein. Again, so you guys can back it up and cover properly. Um, supplements, so choose your supplements wisely. Ideally as athletes, I wouldn't say any supplements. The only thing I would only recommend is magnesium if you are super struggling with recovery the next day. But again, check the brand. Um, and if you are needing protein, then our new best bodies, Body Science. Body Science is Australia approved. Um, they're the only ones I would probably recommend, but otherwise stick to your natural foods. Protein, you got your meats in there, fats and also carbs. And also get plenty of sleep. Um, so a little take home message again, so I've made these all little colourful things. So again, red, so what that represents is, is like um, heart and lungs. Um, with the purple, they're more like brain, heart and cellular functions. With the orange colours, they're more DNA protection and skin health. Um, if they're more green, it's more eye and bone health. And if it's a white colour kind of food source, it's more immunity. Um, so again, just making sure you want to take something home from this today. So carbs, fill your body. Proteins helps rebuild. Fats help protect organs and tissues while they decrease the inflammations around you. Um, fruit and veggies, they have heaps of oxidants, vitamins, minerals to help protect your immune system. So you always want to be feeling, protecting and preventing injuries. Um, also, have you guys all done your e-learning? You should have done that up to that already. Most of you guys have done that. Excellent, just wanted to double check. Look, really? at least we got one. Yeah. 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 
Then last week was supplements. The last time was supplements and something else, I think. Because yeah. on the email it says like do session do session one between what is it one and two. And yeah. Like the first one is between last session and this session. That's fine as long as you at least you guys have like a base foundation now, so like you have a bit more understanding like when you kind of do like that quick e learning. Do we have any questions? Cool, love that. Did that all make sense, girls? Like, was like Ellen and Ivan have to be covered in water? Was that good like foundation? Like, they're good hydrated body. Lemon's good. Um, lemon's a good bowel function to help. Um, I haven't heard too much about. I haven't done much studies about cucumber. All I know about. Yeah. And it's like if you eat it, you're getting like you're getting added minerals from the and vitamins from the cucumber itself. I don't know anything. I haven't seen anything about increasing your hydration from it. Apart from it being water, it's pretty much just a probably if you add like salts to it, they'll probably a bit more better. It's just a solid hit on water. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you like the flavour, then go ahead. <laughs> That's it. Not really. All right. So now what we're gonna go through.